This is a video of a mock-up for a Tetris game. The game's resolution or the ratio will be 16 by 9, but the pixels will be five times their size. And in this case, I'm doing a 16 by 16 rectangle or a square in this case, and I'm figuring out the shading that I'm going to do for the pieces of the Tetris um, of the Tetris game. So each Tetris piece has is made up of four blocks, or at least four squares. And uh, what I did there was a very, a very basic diagonal lighting uh, scheme. And here I'm figuring out the width of the whole board. The board is 10 tiles across by 20 tiles vertically. And I figured that I still have the space to do a gap in between the pieces. But that would be very confusing later on when I would to make the pieces. Now, in this case, I'm doing the T. And my thought was to paint over the gaps. But that will imply that each time I needed to rotate the piece, I would have to redraw the piece. And the reason for this would be that the shading would change. Okay, And I'm adding a few details here, like cracks, just to make the piece more interesting. And I realize that this is going to be uh, a lot more trouble for me later on in the development of the game, rather than uh, just having it look very cool. Now, one of the alternatives is to have the detail painted on the tile and then rotate the tile as it is a part of the piece and the detail would still sort of be there, kind of. Uh, but that's something that has to be debated as well with the programmer. So here's the difference between the two, a different shading, and here is a piece with a shading on it and once I rotate it, it would still uh, retain the same detail, but they would have to be isolated tiles. Now, what I'm doing now is figuring out the grid system because I want to do some frames for the game. Like this is a board, but it has to have some walls and I also want a bottom and a top and some place to put in a score. Uh, what I didn't think about during this process was a place to display the next piece, which is something that I uh, absolutely forgot, uh, which is kind of um, essential to Tetris. So I did this uh, 16 by 32 block, and I'm shading it in a very basic way as well as like with the, uh, with the tiles uh, on the bottom with the blocks for the pieces on the bottom. And there's a few skips here on the video because my connection was pretty bad. Um, so what I did there was I painted the edges a little brighter so that they look sharper, so that they look like they've been chiseled off, worn off, but still retain some sharpness, some, some shine to them. Now, because these are duplicated, they look very, very um, repetitive as I go up. So what I do is I try to find a way, in this case, just change the size of them. So I to duplicate that bit there and I vary the size of the tiles that make up the side border. And that gives me enough variety so that I feel comfortable enough to just duplicate that onto the other side and sort of call it uh, done. So I copy this, the whole thing to the other side, but I uh, shift it so that it doesn't look exactly the same. Now to change the color, I bring up the, um, the hue and saturation. Uh, but unfortunately, the capture software that I was using does not capture it, just the way that it's built, which is ridiculous that it's actually like that. But hey, that's how it works. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the highlights to be really warm and yellow, but I want the shadows to kind of be sort of greenish because I want this to be like a sandstone kind of material. And I want this to kind of look like it's mossy on the uh sort of on the on the on the groves on the on the, um, the parts that have been carved into the stone or where the the stones kind of joined together so i'm uh, hand picking the specific colors that i want and i'm using using the hue and saturation dialog i'm also sort of playing around with uh where the colors uh actually kind of go now for the background of the board i want a really dark uh gray desaturated gray not gray, sorry, um, warm yellow, uh, but really desaturated, almost gray. And what I want to do is I want to do a big slab of, of stone, and I'm going to be piling a lot of these. And I, I try a few shading details at, here at the top. It doesn't look good. I just go in for the little bright dot with a dark dot on top, which creates this little um, hole on the stone. And uh, I don't want to just pile them together uh, as bricks because that will look very, very repetitive. But what I do is I, I'm able to create various uh, various sizes out of this. Now, what you saw me do there earlier was those those little details, those little uh, holes on the stone that I did. They were close to the edges of each individual 16 by 16 space. So because I was afraid that when I copied and pasted them, I would lose them, I just sort of shifted them into the more central area of the of the of the 16 by 16 tile. Uh, one thing you don't want to do with your pattern is keep it repetitive. You sort of want to shift things uh, around a little bit so that even though you're using kind of the same tiles, you're still getting away with doing very peculiar 
uh, sort of pecu uh, peculiar shapes and, and they, they sort of tile well together, but it's really just a trick. Uh, so I'm kind of avoiding or trying to avoid doing very repetitive patterns. Otherwise, it'll be obvious what I did when I just copied and pasted things into place. It, it has to be in a way that it's not obvious to someone, but it looks good, so they kind of go with it. That's that's the objective, is that it looks well enough. Now, in this case, because I want to, this to look pack, uh, pushed back, I'm going to do a, a dither pattern. And in this case, I do just by duplicating pixels across. And then I go across the top edge there to make it look like there's a shadow. And uh, using the same bricks as I have for the side, I'm going to make the bricks for the top. Now, I'm pretty sure I try um, various uh, colors here, but I'm not really happy with what I'm getting at all because I want this edge to be pulled out. And one thing that it's not helping is the fact that I still have that highlight on the left, on the vertical edge, on the left and on the right. So after I'm happy with the color, I have to go in and actually cover that up with some colors from underneath. And now it does look, and with a little bit of a cast shadow, it now does look like it's uh, pulling out a little bit more. Uh, I also copy the dither pattern to the side because I think it kind of still works as a way to push that whole image back. And now I want to do the framing of that around just using the same sort of texture. So I'm pretty much just picking up the colors from there, uh, from the, the edges on the side and not exactly the same color, a little toned down, just a little. Um, I think I've changed my mind a little bit later and make it a slightly darker. Uh, but what I want to make sure is that it looks uh, to be the same material, but not, yeah, there we go, a little darker. Be the same material, but not really stand out all that much. One thing I did try here was to do a bit of a, a vegetation decoration on this, like a little bit of a, little bit of a vine. Um, and it works up to a certain point. Uh, I would have to be really careful about picking these, re uh, these greens, which I really didn't. Adding the shadow does work, setting it in place. Um, but overall, I think the, the, the green that I chose wasn't very, wasn't uh, a very good green. Uh, now I'm, I'm building up the pieces for the Tetris itself. Um, and, uh, these are basically just duplicating the blocks. I think at this point, I kind of made my mind up that I'm not going to be, um, making ultra complicated pieces. I think I've done all of that. I don't think I've forgotten any of them. So I'm just grouping all of these layers together and I'm going to be changing their colors. Um, so that they're all different pieces in a way. So there we go. They're all kind of getting, you're not seeing the hue and saturation um, screen, but uh, I'm changing them using the hue and saturation. I also add a shadow. I think I'll be able to add this shadow because I think it just increases the, just gives it a cool effect. And I'm making this uh, score holder there, which I'm just picking a dark shade and then adding a dark shadow at the top and a bright edge at the bottom to make it look like it's carved in. And then I hand draw a few numbers. Now I start with a, with a very thick number two and it kind of works, but as soon as I get to the three, I realize, nah, I can't do it so thick. So I'm gonna just simplify the numbers all together and, uh, and that'll, help, uh, that'll help them read a lot better. Now, for some reason I flipped the five thinking I was gonna do the six, but I freaking actually flipped the six back to what it was so there's the seven and the, the blue I try one way and then I decide by another one. So this is it. This is pretty much the whole building of the Tetris um, mock-up, which I think came out fairly nice. Uh, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care.